uh, which means if you have some uh, bt that effect flows on to some mass uh, kappa or right thought so we are not discussing that discussing that separately now um, the in theravada at least i can't comment on the other uh, mahayana in theravada there is a discourse called the great discourse on the establishment of mindfulness in pali we call it the sati pattana sutta sati pattana sutta sati means mindfulness pattana means establishment so it is treated with great uh, respect in theravada uh, in fact in the sutta at the start the buddha said this is the one and only way to enlightenment the pali word use is ekayo no maggo now that can be disputed but to us it seems that it is the one and only way some people try to interpret this as uh, saying that the only practice that you need is sati practice so mindfulness practice i am not sure about that i would support that view all these practices are necessary the all the lanes of the noble eight pole path are i think equally important but ultimately for a person to attain enlightenment even in the last minute sati must be there mindfulness must be there that is that is why probably the buddha says this is the one and only way of attaining enlightenment so let's not mix up that idea and try to exclude the rest of the teaching that would not be correct uh, <clears throat> now last time also we had a look at um, the comparison between mindfulness and concentration because a lot of people treat them as as one idea it's not correct now the one idea concept has arisen partly from abhidhamma or buddhist psychology there's a separate pitaka or a basket for that those teachings there are seven books of abhidhamma and in one book it clearly states that when a, when a being is born we are looking at the human world of course the uh, is born with a mind which has both concentration and mindfulness operating but of course right at birth they may be at low energy levels uh, in the sense that only for a few things a little baby will be mindful as you can imagine there's a little amount of concentration as the child grows both this vocal both this mental states um start growing and of course when a person is in school age they have a good amount of mindfulness and concentration and both need to be developed and can be developed so our book on the practical techniques to teach buddhism to youth is based on the assumption that mindfulness and concentration are both being developed by children at high school age and of course later too now um it so um, another question that can arise in the especially in the case of young people is with the memory is the same thing as mindfulness in fact uh, i have i have met a person who was writing a phd thesis on mindfulness and he was trying to show or prove that uh, there is no difference between memory and mindfulness um now 
Uh, my idea is that there are two different things that uh, if you have mindfulness at this moment, if you are say hearing what we are saying, that means you are mindful. In the next moment, it will become a memory. So memory, we think, is dependent on current mindfulness. If you don't have current mindfulness, memory will not result. So later on, you will not remember what you heard. Actually, if you, if you take, uh, say, the list that we discussed last week, uh, we, we, got, we, got, uh, we read out a list like this. Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, Sila, Chaga, Devata. Sila was virtue, Chaga was giving, Devata is deities or celestial beings. Now, suppose you are asked one hour later, can you repeat that list? Do you think you will be able to repeat it? I'm sure you will, because you have already heard it, and maybe you have tried to remember it. Uh, at this stage, I would invite uh, invite you to comment on the statements I have made, firstly about the idea of memory, the idea of concentration, and the value of sati. Whatever comments you have. Yes, and in the meantime, you might get ready the book so that we can show some information. Yeah, no, it's there. Uh, just let me know which chapter you want to go to. Yeah. Do you want me to bring the book up? Uh, pardon? No, just do you want me to show the book? Uh, I, I can't quote a chapter right now. Keep the book ready, yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's ready, but do you want me to go to a particular chapter? No, not at the moment. Huh? Okay. After a minute. Right. Now, uh, yeah, some children have a lot of problems with memory. And uh, in modern education, um, the words used are, to explain that they say they have an attention deficit. Now again, I would like to clarify that this mental state of attention is also present in a living being from birth. So we have maybe our attention as a low, at, is at a low energy level so that we can't put our mind on something that is in front of us. So attention deficit also is connected to memory, mindfulness, and concentration. Now, of course, if there is more attention, uh, there is there, there can be mindfulness. Is that correct? Do you agree? Or? No comments? Okay. The other point I'm making here is children often ask whether when you use the word mindfulness, what is the mindful of? They think that this Buddhist word implies that there is something filling the mind. In a way, you now some people tend to laugh at this question, saying that this is not like a bottle to be filled with. But I think the children are correct in, in a way because the mind is full of in the mental state that is called awareness. If you, are, if you have awareness, if you are, then probably it can all, the state will be discussed, uh, described as a state of mindfulness. But I must say that uh, now some writers, mostly monks, um, in the German tradition in Sri Lanka, they have sometimes used the word awareness 
as an alternative for the word mindfulness. Now, there have been questions about that in recent writings. Maybe awareness is one of the important elements of mindfulness, but awareness per se, uh, in a secular sense, is not mindfulness. Mindfulness is, the, is a defined word in Buddhism, which leads to enlightenment. It is also connected to morality. So that's something that Western writers may not agree about. But we have to remember that uh, there is a special meaning given to the word mindfulness on top of this idea of just being aware. Now, two of the uh, three of the features that are associated with the Buddhist idea of mindfulness are continued effort, which is called atapi in Pali, is used in the Satipatthana Sutta. Um, it is also connected to some amount of wisdom, which is implied by the Pali word Sampajanya, again in the Satipatthana Sutta. Also the Satipatthana Sutta assumes that the person developing mindfulness has an attitude of non-craving. That is not, he is not trying to build up more craving through mindfulness. So if, the, if you get all these features, non-craving to whatever extent possible, effort and wisdom, then awareness will grow into the larger concept of mindfulness. That's our view, which somebody can dispute. Um, now, in the, in the whole world, there is a tendency now to teach mindfulness in a secular sense. Even here, there are problems arising from that. People teach mindfulness to professions, to tradesmen, almost everywhere, even managers, because mindfulness in their, say, in their usage of the world is useful for success in the world and happiness in the world. That may be true, but the, we should not misguide ourselves to think that all those teachings of mindfulness by various associations is what is intended in the Satipatthana Sutta. <clears throat> now, excuse me. So what I say is secular mindfulness without those last mentioned ideas would be, certainly be useful in trades and professions and for students but it is very different from our effort towards enlightenment. Now, Vipassana Samadhi, which you mentioned last time, was advocated by the Buddha as a way towards enlightenment. He did not recommend Samatha Samadhi. Samatha Samadhi was just concentration through calming, through suppression of the senses and so on. Vipassana Samadhi is advocated as the way to enlightenment, to, en to finish the cycle of sables. But Vipassana Samadhi difference is not on suppression of the senses, but on understanding. If, when you develop Vipassana Samadhi or insight, Inside concentration, actually, you are enabled to deal with the situation with calmness, awareness, and understanding uh, as essential features. Now, it is, it is not just keeping away sense experiences, as some people try to do. And that does that is not a way recommended towards enlightenment. Yeah. 
you know, as as I mentioned a little while ago, right effort and right right mindfulness are also closely connected to vipassana samadhi because you can try to develop mindfulness one moment, but you might get tired the second moment. That means there is no sustained effort. That does not lead to vipassana samadhi. Vipassana samadhi also includes the four jhanas um, or what you call in English absorptions. Now again, this is a controversial matter. Some people think of jhanas as pure concentrations. That is, you prevent the mind from going anywhere, but let it stay at one point. Then you start developing certain jhanas. Now those jhanas do not lead to enlightenment. That's our view. Those jhanas are practiced maybe in other religions, definitely in, in Hinduism. Now, those jhanas were practiced by the teachers who first taught uh, ascetic Siddhartha, Alar Kalam and Uddhara, Uddha Karamaputta. They had made great attainments using those jhanas. Uh, those, are you, those jhanas that they attained are usually called uh, material jhanas or oh, immaterial jhanas. We will not discuss those now. Now, in the case of the vipassana samadhi and the jhanas generated through vipassana samadhi, the practice actually includes the three points that I mentioned at the end of this note. That is virtue, practice of seal, practice of virtue, practice of renunciation, letting go, giving up, things like that, and understanding the negative aspects of experience of Adina in Pali. Now, when you keep practicing these three, you, you stay close to attaining the jhanas. Of course, we are not dealing with that now. Again, there are four jhanas listed um, in Theravada Buddhism that can be attained through vipassana, uh, but they have a different quality uh, and they have the ability to help the practitioner to get close to enlightenment. Okay, that's that's the end of the introduction. Uh, before we go on to presentation 13, I will give you some time to uh, ask questions or make comments. So I guess the purpose, one question is, if we are teaching youth, you said because there's a difference between normal awareness and sati, mindfulness, the, the, is it useful to teach the secular aspects of awareness to kids? What was the last question? Is it useful to teach the awareness aspects, the secular awareness aspects to, to kids. Yeah, definitely. Because the, the sati, as you said, the sati side, the real establishment of mindfulness, uh, at least in the Satipatthana Sutta, is, is purely uh, geared towards attainment of enlightenment, but that's yes. not the purpose in teaching kids. So that's right. how do you close that bridge between the two yeah. is something that's worth yeah. all this stuff. So we are doing this in this course so that a future counselor will have the proper idea. But that does not mean that we can teach high school students at this level. We can't do that. So for them, uh, even up to a higher age like 25 or 30 years, people don't seem to understand the difference. So at that level, the more practical thing is to treat awareness as mindfulness and proceed with it. There's no harm. Yes, Venerable, would you like to make a comment? Yeah. Uh, 
Yes, actually, uh, this is uh, something a little bit out of the way, actually. Uh, so normally, uh, when we are teaching for kids, they yeah. might ask, might be an asked questions. So, yeah. um, so I would I would like to throw a, like that kind of a question. So yeah. I would like to see what your perspective regarding that. So my question is, yes, I understood uh, mindfulness is not memory. So yeah. that is very clear. Mm -hmm. So what if uh, some student may ask, um, what is the difference between mindfulness and a circus person who can go through uh, what you call uh, with a balance work? I don't know. Mm. You can understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. how 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 you could uh, uh, comment on that? How you could uh, tackle those questions? What what are the what are the ways of those? Yeah, that as I mentioned earlier, my answer would be that uh, in the case in the case of a person like that, uh, it is awareness that is easily understood by a by a child, and we should teach that. Um, at the same time, one of the features of um, sati, according to Theravada Buddhism, that is sustained effort, is also relevant there. We have to say, be aware of what you are doing, but, but have an idea that you are not applying effort for this moment and giving up the next moment. So a sustained effort is also a very useful idea that we can borrow and teach children. Um, because even bright children sometimes have this weakness of uh, sustaining effort. So the total result is often uh, uh, not excellent. Yeah. So we can do that. Is this that answer your question? Bante, sorry, yes. yeah, your Bante, your question was exactly what uh, the child might ask, the difference between how a circus performer does a difficult act. Uh, and so so what's the, what do you think might be their question there exactly? Uh, actually, uh, Tanuja, the, let's say uh, uh, children may ask, uh, I would say, I, I would like to comment. Um, the circus person is also doing the mindfulness. So yeah. he's balancing the work and he do very properly. If there is any case, definitely he will die. So, mm. so what if he might ask the difference? How are you gonna uh, showcase? Okay, so I think Fundamentally, I think uh, using that example, what we are saying is, uh, what is really the difference between these three words? And this is how I interpret it. What's the difference between mindfulness, awareness, and attention? Mm. 